Hey everybody, welcome back to Sounds Like a Drum, a Cadence Independent Media production. If you're just joining us, what we do here is tuning tips and tricks and hacks and tone and myth busting, all kinds of stuff like that. And today we are addressing something that I've heard a lot about and that I honestly don't spend a whole lot of time thinking about myself. Uh, so this was good for me too. And that is whether or not having your bass drum beater strike the center of the batter head actually matters or not. This was brought to my attention relatively recently as a thing that people think about a lot. It had not come up for me as a variable that I was concerned with um, for a few simple reasons that we'll get to, but we're gonna do this, um, more importantly, on both a 24 with a ported front head and some EQ pads inside, and also on an unmuffled 18 tuned a little bit higher so we can kind of get both sides of the vibe. Thanks again to Promark by Dodero for being our presenting sponsor. Today I am trying out Forward Balance Acorn 5As, and I had a lot of fun with them there inherently louder than the rebound ones, and that was super duper fun. Also, thanks so much to DistroKid for sponsoring this episode. You're probably in a band, maybe multiple bands, and they offer an incredible service, and they've actually given us an opportunity to ferry a discount to you through this particular video. What DistroKid is, is a service that affords you someone to basically hand your content to, who will then distribute it to all of the online streaming services for you, basically for a flat rate, and you get 100% of the royalties. They don't keep any of it. You just pay a flat rate once a year, and you can give them as much music as you want. It's, it's incredible. It doesn't matter if you're uploading one 14-song record a year or if you want to do five EPs in a given year. It's all flat rate, and none of the proceeds are getting divided by anybody. They all just come straight back to you. Now, they have a few different kind of price structure levels depending on the sort of client that you are, but the single musician, single band levels, what we're talking about today, it is 19 $19.99 a year and you can upload again as much music as you want to and they were kind enough to give an exclusive deal through us just to sounds like a drum there's a link below where if you click through you can get seven percent off that just right out of the gate and basically just start getting your music to every possible direction including you know tons of them that you've never heard of that I definitely had never heard of so thanks again for helping us out. DistroKid is a great company, and as long as you're watching this video, as long as this video is live, that link is working down there forever. So go check it out. They're awesome. Okay, so let's kick this off. The idea physically about hitting the center of the bass drum batter head is kind of like aiming for the center of your snare drum or anything else. It seems like a reasonable target. It seems like the punchiest tone will live there. And to a certain degree, you know, the physics bear that out. The question here is not whether or not the center sounds good. It's whether or not it's worth uh, worrying about in terms of your pedal setup, in terms of your, um, I don't know, playing style, all those things. So we're going to start with my 24, my GMS. It's a 24 by 14 maple drum, pretty run of the mill, all things considered. We are doing a UV EQ4 batter head and an EQ3 Rezo ported with two EQ pads inside. Um, this batter head's new to me, but the rest of it is my normal setup for the drum. We just wanted to kind of have like identical batters for both of the bass drums and it was time to switch it out. To just get ahead of this, we have a separate video about pedal setup and about my thoughts on preferred pedal setup. I'm not gonna say proper. I don't believe that there's proper. I'm just saying like where I've landed in my life. Now today, I'm not making any adjustments to the pedal except for how far the beater is sticking out, the beater shaft length. Um, I'm not messing with the spring, I'm not messing with the angle, none of that stuff. But first of all, let's just hear how it sounds hitting the center, and then we'll hear how it sounds hitting well north of center.
say the phrase again, it sounds like a drum. It sounds like my drum. It, it's what I'm expecting. The main thing I'm feeling right now is that the behavior of the pedal feels weirder than I'm used to. And it's worth mentioning that I set up my pedal based on feel, not based on strike zone on the drum that I'm playing. And the feel of the pedal has more to do with me being comfortable and me being able to play how I want to play. So basically, I, I wouldn't worry about this in terms of this drum because it sounds like it always does when it's hitting in the center and the pedal feels a little weird. A 24 is a lot of real estate and before we got into this today I was imagining that I was hitting the center of the head in my normal setup and when we set it up with the new head and I put my pedal on it I was about the size of the beater north of center which uh, was a surprise to me because I figured like that's the biggest drum I own and uh Surely I'm hitting the center on that one because, you know, on a 20, I'm definitely above center on an 18. It's almost non-optional without a lift. Now I'm going to go the other way and I'm going to extend it basically as far as I can. So it's going to be significantly higher than the center of the drum and play some other stuff. And then we'll talk about that. Okay, so this is uh, differently uncomfortable because it's much, much longer, so the whole pedal feels sluggish, doubles feel a little sluggish, we're dealing with weight being further from the hinge, there's, you know, some lever physics going on in here, some response physics going on, that all boil down to that I would rather have my pedal be comfortable than worry about this, and also, I don't hear a difference. So... For me, um, splitting the difference to my normal spot, it's gonna get the same thing. I know that people talk about double pedals versus two bass drums and the idea of one of the beaters being centered and one of them being slightly off-center, affecting the sound, affecting their feel. I don't begrudge anybody their opinion, but I am comfortable saying that on a 24, there's probably, I don't know, a five or six inch zone in the center that if you're hearing a difference, it's got more to do with your playing or your pedal setup or how you're feeling that day than anything to do with where you're hitting in that target zone. Now, just to kind of cement that, here's a quick back-to-back -back comparison of just centered and as much not centered as we could get it. Okay, let's go to the other end of the spectrum. We have an 18 down here. We have full heads on both sides. We have the UV EQ4, and we have the EQ3 on the front with no port. There's nothing in it. I tuned it up to be kind of boomy, a little kind of 808, streety a little bit, because I want to get a ton of resonance out of it and see if centered versus off-center is going to behave differently with a totally unmuffled drum other than the little edge rings on the heads. Here's where things get interesting. I brought all of my bass drum beaters with me and there was no way in the world I was gonna be able to hit the center of the head without putting the drum on a lift or cutting the beater shaft. So we put the drum on the lift that we have here, which gets it another maybe inch and a half, maybe two inches off the ground, depending on how you set it up. And I still couldn't quite get to the center of the head. So I went through all of my beaters and there was one where the shaft, it's a vintage one, the shaft is maybe, I don't know, half an inch shorter. And we got to basically the center of the head. Um, and the first thing I noticed is that the play of the pedal, it's 
it's almost useless. There's no bounce, there's no rebound. Doubles are virtually impossible to play with a, set, a pedal setup this way. I could loosen the spring and adjust some other things on it to try to make it playable, but basically we got it down there and we're gonna show, <laughs> we're gonna basically show what that does. So here we go. <laughs> So when you're setting up a pedal this way, the physics involved really, really, really affect the sound. And they really, really, really affect how the pedal feels for you. And it's going to mess with your pocket. It's going to mess with everything about how it feels. If this is your normal way of playing and you're used to it, by all means. But if you're in a situation where you're like, I'm going to use a tiny bass drum and I'm going to lower my beater down because that's what you do, you're going to find that it's bizarre and you might have to make a lot of other changes that... Um, well, we're, we're going to see if it's, really, if it's really worth it or not, but um, suffice to say, it doesn't seem worth it to me um, at this point. But we need to put this against a longer beater length. So I'm going to extend this beater all the way, same tuning, not change anything, and see how that sounds. First thing, it's a whole lot louder because the travel of the beater head is way, way longer and I'm able to do what amounts to a full stroke with my leg and my foot. I was actually feeling really tense trying to play it the other way because I couldn't figure out how to control it and I'm not feeling the weight at the end. Imagine taking your drumstick and holding it here and trying to play all of your chops. That's literally what's happening when you lower your beater shaft. Now, going from here to here, that's a feel change. That's cool. Going to here, starting to become problematic. So, I yeah, I hope that helps. <laughs> so, right out of the gate, let's point out that longer shaft means a whole lot louder. So, that's not where I'm hitting the head. That's the pedal and me interacting and then hitting the drum after the fact. It's a bigger sound. It's a boomier sound. You can say or you can posit that it's because I'm hitting off center, but... I can feel in the pedal that it is because I'm throwing the beater super duper hard. And because I can do that, I'm drawing a different sound out of the drum. Now we've talked about this issue in some other situations where people are concerned about a variable and they're not sure you know, what exactly is happening here. And this is another chance for me to say that the variable in your foot from stroke to stroke, the variable from pedal to pedal, drum to drum, day to day, get up, go get a cup of coffee, come back, you went up and down some stairs, you feel different, that is a bigger deal. And the sound of off center and the sound of center are both viable sounds, um, but I'm really, I'm really, really, really not concerned about it. And I've never ever had anybody express concern to me about a sound that I was making that resulted in me finding the culprit being this. It's always tuning or it's my playing. Or, or frankly, like there's something wrong with the pedal, frankly. Like I would, I would take my pedal apart before I would concern myself with hitting the center of the drum. Just, I mean, honestly, that's it. All right, just like before, we're gonna do a quick back-to-back -back so you can kind of hear what changed and bear in mind that it was me that was feeling different more so than anything else.
Now, the bottom line here is that I'm not trying to say that there is a right or wrong way to do this. I'm not saying that they're not different. They could be in some circumstances different. What I'm saying here is that your comfort zone, your comfort level affects your playing and I don't think that this is a thing that's worth worrying about that much versus being happy with the beater you've chosen, bringing your own pedal to the gig if it's a backline situation, knowing your gear and also frankly working on your technique and using that as means to get a sound rather than thinking that there's I don't know, like an issue here that I just, I can't seem to, I can't seem to generate a problem from this angle that would be like, oh man, I need to get a lift for my drum. That's really what it boils down to. One side note though, if you are playing jungle kits, if you've got like a 16 inch bass drum or something like that, um, you're going to need to lift it up to be able to hit it at all. Um, and most of those drums have some kind of apparatus that's built into them or that comes with them for that. That's a special situation and you do need help with that because that's more of that like the pedal just won't do the job it's physically not possible to get a normal uh, length on your beater and also hit the head you know not on the edge basically so that's a special case but for those of you out there that are playing 18s or 20s or larger and you're wondering about this i can tell you like all of our heroes that played 18s in the jazz world or played 20s in the funk world all those sounds that you love, if it's, you know, James Gadsden or, you know, whoever, they definitely were not concerned with this. They were concerned with getting a good sound and they did what it took to get a good sound. And it was you know, whatever it takes, man, do whatever it takes. So that about sums it up. Um, I hope this was helpful. It was definitely helpful for me because uh, I was beginning to wonder if this was a thing I should be concerned with. And now I know that I don't need to be, which is delightful. Um, the less variables that we can have in the backs of our minds that are creating background chatter and making us uncomfortable, the better we all are. Thanks again to Promark by Daddario for helping us out today. And please like, comment, and subscribe and hit the little button next to the subscribe button down there so that you get notifications when we put up new videos. We do it every Tuesday, 12.30 p.m. Eastern time. And even if you don't get a notification, they are there, I promise. Now, um, also, there will be probably some extra discussion and stuff over on our Patreon about this, some additional content, things like that as per usual. So please go and check that out. There's a link below. And do let us know if you've had differing experiences with this um, because I haven't actually gotten to have a conversation with someone where this was the solution to an issue they were having just because it hasn't come up. So if anybody out there knows more about this or has really run into it, again, with, you know, normal sized drums and not jungle kits, let us know.